It seems that we have a TVT right now. Awesome. And this is going to be on Interlooper, man. So this is not a race I play. Terran versus right. Terran. These games tend to go a little longer. Is that, that fair or has that changed? It recently? can end uh, pretty fast or it can go on. Well, it's like every other matchup, to be honest. Mm -hmm. All right. Fair enough. I, I know like tank lines against tank lines usually usually go right. a little longer, but it takes a while to Back get Back when tank evacs were a thing, thing mm -hmm. <laughs> things went pretty fast, but nowadays it's a little different. Okay. Fair enough. So... Interloper. This is actually a really cool map. I like. I think you've got a lot of avenues where you can attack your opponent. That's um, right. And it, it creates like more of like the Fabian hit and run tactics, and that's that can make it a much faster paced game. So we'll see where the, where mm -hmm. this goes. But yeah, this one is, thing mm -hmm. about this is that uh, unlike different maps, there are a lot of high grounds like what I would call as cliffs uh, mm -hmm. scattered around the maps. So okay. that would mean the air units are particularly strong there. Because the low uh, the units on the ground can't hit the air units if they're on the high ground, then yeah, that's just one disadvantage. So I'm mm -hmm. predicting that the Vikings and Liberators will play a much more important role in here compared uh -huh. to the other maps. All right, so we've got almost mirrored opens openings here for both players. Jen um, is going to be the player that Sonic Aftermath has sent out to take out Sotorx, right. who has actually broke the ZBZ mold. So now we're seeing a different mirror match. Um, right. Do you I know think that you Jen is like, really a f yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, you finish your thought, yeah? Oh, do you think he's like like pre-planned sniper? Like this is their best guy against Terran? Or do you think this is just uh, who they could field at the moment? Well, I did see that uh, he was mm -hmm. a Grandmaster, so right. that could possibly be a strong indicator, but mm -hmm. you never know in a game of StarCraft of how things are going to out play out, especially if it's a TBT. And I know that a lot mm -hmm. of you guys don't really like mirror matchups, but TBT is the best mirror matchup that you can see. What makes you say that? Because, uh, I mean, I've watched all of them, I, right. I, I'm fairly fond of ZVZ, but I play Zerg. My other favorite right. is TVP, so why, why, why TVT? Well, definitely, even for those who don't really play the game and don't understand the game much, there's always huge explosions and guys dying everywhere from those uh, marine tank lines. That's okay, always fair. interesting. Blood and more. if you are more of a technical player, you play on the ladder a lot, there are so many different variations and the openings that the Terran players that can do that it's not present in ZBZ or PvP. So the early five minutes is always exciting. And once that's over, the tank, marine, the viking, the interaction is always fun to, you know, just see guys getting blown off on the screen. Okay, well, looks like we got the match arena thing figured out. Apparently, I forgot to update the link for this event. We were had it set for Polygon Invitational 11. Now I get it. Sorry about that, guys. I'm fairly new to the team league thing so forgive me i'll get that set up immediately after this but just use the link i provided and share it around please thank you so much guys but let's introduce these players here on the top left hand side of interloper in the yellow terran trunk playing for psionic aftermath he is Jin. spawning in the bottom right it's the Returning player from the last game is Nocturnal Gaming Satorix. Indeed. So it looks like some Reaper action has already started. We've got Cyclones on the field for Sotorx as well. And uh, what, what was it they killed earlier? A Reaper and a SCV already. And some well, that's a very good advantage. Now, the reason why uh, Terran players go with such macro-oriented approach is because the Cyclone. Cyclone is just such a good unit early on. It can kill Reapers, it can kill Marines, it can kill a lot of things. And let's see that uh, Satorx has definitely taken the non-macro approach starting the mm -hmm. Command Center right now. So Satorx definitely has to handle a lot right now to make it an even game. Yeah, um, so we've got uh, the Viking spotters already coming oh, out for Jen. Oh, tank is shelling the Cyclone, and he really has to save that Cyclone. But that yes. tank position is just brilliant. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure if these Cyclones can make it home, actually. Yeah, and the Viking actually now moving into position to right. do a little bit of spotting for that tank. making The Viking took an initial hit, so we're not sure if Zerks can really take this game. 
Uh, there's too much damage on both uh, on Satorx. Yeah, and um, these units are just getting cleaned up. Yeah, dude, that that's actually brutal. He dedicated a lot of that attack, but his SCV count has caught up, and it looks like both players do have their uh, second bases. Does need to repair his, but yeah, it, it's working out. I think for both players. Yeah. Um, the problem is that Satorix has made mm -hmm. a very expensive attack, but he probably did not anticipate the siege tank as the first unit, as most players usually mm -hmm. prefer to make cyclones, right? So here we really have to see Satorix pulling up, and I think it the uh, right here comes the Raven, and it is up to the Raven to see how much he can make up to come back into the game. Rob. Fair enough, man. Well, Raven, Banshee, those are always pretty annoying combos there. That's true. They're just harassment units early on, and they can be so cost efficient if you strike. So this is looking like it's going to turn into more of like a setup phase. Where do you think this is going to go in the mid game? Right now, Jin is pretty confident that he's so ahead that he's making a third command center. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, uh, if it's done right, it can be a huge lead. Now, with the Vikings that are on patrol, this means that he really wants to protect his base and make sure that he doesn't fall to any more attacks. He yeah. probably thinks that because Sotorx has not made a very good attack, mm -hmm. he is going to come back soon to make up for his losses. And we can definitely see the evidence of that with the faster stim being done. Yeah, you can also see that in the bottom right where the units lost are. We actually have right. 1143 loss for Sotorx and only about half that for Jin. Mm, that's true. Now, what uh, Jin has to do is that he is most likely going to defend his base with mm -hmm. the superior tank count. And because he has been making tanks ever since his factory got a tech lab, he is going to have a much easier time doing that. However, one important mechanic is that the, the stim plays a huge role in mm -hmm. mopping up the marines, protecting the tank plane. So that is really what Jin uh, Sotorix has to do. Yeah, and this Banshee getting targeted down, killed off by those four Vikings, and that's like another oh. huge loss by Tor. Indeed. So, um, yeah, uh, it seems that Jin is just continuously uh, playing the defense. Now, as you mm -hmm. can see, infrastructure, the on the top left of the map, mm -hmm. Jin is just making finished making two barracks, and he's adding on the reactors now. Now, compare that to Satorx, right. which has the three racks. Okay. The supply difference was hugely different for both sides, with Jin getting mm -hmm. a huge lead. But now, the tables have turned, and that is thanks to the three racks. And it yeah. seems that with the stem being done, let's see what Satorx can do to come back from this game. Jin actually has a really cool high ground advantage here. He can just siege up. And with the two, with the, the both players having Vikings, whoever can win that uh, air war is going to have a huge advantage in this tank numbers. But right. Oh, the initial number. hit took out too much Marines right there, and there's a superior Viking count. Dude, all those dead bodies, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> that it, is the crucial. stem was being uh, invested to make mm -hmm. sure the Marines were strong and that they could take out, out the Marines protecting the tanks. Right. If those Marines were taken out by the tanks, then the mm -hmm. early stem loses its meaning. Now the momentum has gone back to Jin, I'm afraid. And yeah. Sotorx really has to make something happen within the next minute to get back into the game. Yeah, so Torx actually does have a slight SCV lead, and they're looking at even army supply. So right. yeah, I, I absolutely agree that you know Jin's got the momentum here, definitely has the superior tank count. But ah man, this is brutal. This is brutal. Yeah, another thing I want to mention out is that the upgrades. The Satorx has started 1-1 one, one upgrade, mm -hmm. Jin only the attack. Now that could play out to be a huge difference, even with one difference of an upgrade. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually liking Satorx's position here to fake an attack, but actually not really going for it. Even if his early stim didn't pay off, he's going in the right direction. <laughs> well, this is so... Like this is this is so tense, man. If either side just pushes out even slightly, it's gonna be a massacre. We already saw one massacre just like that, but uh, yes, yeah, I so agree with you. To Jen's base yeah. and oh, yeah. look. And I'm very actually, I'm actually very glad that you mentioned it's a very tense situation. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, those these units are positioned so close 
but it seems that right now Jin has a more sophisticated composition. Uh, composition. That's right, he has to pull back now. He has gone the macro approach to play the catch-up game. If uh -huh. his units die now, then there's just no way for him to come back. Uh, he has. He better retreat now. Uh, okay, the tanks are unseached. That's a vulnerability right there. Yeah, and his opponent does see that too, so he's got to get out, man. He did oh, take right. a risk there, killing off the the rocks, but it might pay off for him because he's he's getting out of there unmolested. That's right. Now, well, what's also interesting is mm -hmm. that uh, while Jin has actually took a pretty good start, Sotorx is actually playing it really calm and nice. Mm -hmm. uh, no. For the level 2 upgrades, you need an armory for that too. But, armory is done for Satorx, but it's not done for Jin. He just started it right after plus 1 was uh, done. So if yeah. Satorx can really lead this into the mid game, then it's uh -huh. going to be uh, actually benefiting Satorx by a huge margin. Dude, uh, but, Jin but is course, starting his yeah. armory. So, yeah. this goes much longer. Uh, do, never mind. I take all of that back. Two two starting <laughs> now for Sotorx. Sotorx Plus more yeah. weapons attack. Yeah, every every technological advantage favoring Sotorx. Right, uh, right. He's just got to keep his opponent locked down. That's going to be a long game play. That's true. Um, I do like the sensor towers on both sides. It means that not much attack is going to be done, and that's absolutely fine with me because I want to see a two hundred supply versus two hundred supply epic battle. 200, 200, man, it's gonna be brutal. Now they are trying to take down these rocks, but Jen getting his army in position, the tanks getting in line. Now we got the Vikings kind of swinging over this little uh, cliff edge here, but Sotorx not actually committing too heavily. He's just going Oh, he's splitting his army into two, but there's <gasps> just too many tanks on both sides. Yeah, dude, another 10 situation. A lot of damage being taken there by Sotorx, who is now 10 army supply behind, but definitely sitting on better upgrades. Right, so Torx has to realize that mm -hmm. if he's trying to fit, take the fight here, it might just be that Jin might have a better advantage. Because you're knocking at the enemy's doorsteps. That means mm -hmm. reinforcements are going to come Look out faster. This. Jin is actually dropping on both sides of Sotorx. That's right. Time. Oh, this pincer attack is going to be absolutely deadly. Oh my uh, god, the tanks are on siege for Jin, but... The Marines so are going to come out late to the party, and oh, unfortunately, these Marines are just going to get cleaned up. And with these Vikings, uh, it's going to make them escape safely, but the damage is too huge. That was so brutal. Oh my god, Jin oh, yeah. so smart there. Now Jin taking his army, moving it forward, but he is not leapfrogging his tanks. He is going to be coming directly into some tank fire if he is not very, very careful. He is trying to come around the cliff's edge and maybe hit this third base location. A fourth base has been taken by Sotorx. So we'll see, but that was just so brutal, man. He was still over yeah, definitely. Uh, half the uh, units lost than his opponent. Okay, 2 2 upgrade is almost done, but it seems like Jin is not going to give him the time. With only five seconds to left to go, the base is denied. But fortunately, there's a fourth base up at the uh, 3 o'clock position, so it seems mm -hmm. like it's good. Oh my god, this is so intense, man. There's literally gore everywhere from these oh, two Oh, there's players. another small detachment of army going up north. And realizing that, Jin pulls out all his off forces to defend this position. Yeah, um, we are going to see exactly what Sotorx can get, do to get back into this game. He's being forced to move out of that position that, and uh, keeps his tanks from uh, siege there. But Planetary Fortress is to the right, and from the front. Right. If it's just two tanks at this stage of the game, then mm -hmm. it's not going to do much. So while that sensor tower snipe was good, mm -hmm. uh, but he had to back out there, of course. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Well, no. Jin definitely sitting on an economic advantage here. Sotorx playing from very far behind, but still has a plus two armor advantage here. Right. And this Jin's army has gone into the sensor tower range, so Sotorx now knows, but it seems it might be a little bit too late because these marines are wandering out into the open. Uh, Jin coming right in. These three tanks are going to be a match for the massive army of Jin. No, this is so brutal. Here we go in the ramp of Jin. Sotorx trying to make his last stand possible. Does take that army uh, with his own tanks, but there's still a huge army in his own. Oh, here comes the SCD pole. He just has to delay. If you're not going to win a front of fight, always go for a base trade. Yeah, that, that's fair, man. He does lift. These tanks are going to have a hard time lift, 
or with anything lifted. He does have his own marine, so it uh, looks like lifting is not going to be an issue oh, for Jin. Thing. It is a brilliant decision. You have to neutralize all forces coming out from the opponent's base, and these tanks are just not going to be able to do anything versus stem marines with good upgrades. Now, uh, the most important thing about base mm -hmm. trade is that you have to gain air superiority. That is just so much better. Uh, with one Vikings, and later if they're in a locked situation, oh my goodness, <laughs> look at these barracks, Chef. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to play the catch-up game hard. Now, yeah, uh, Liberator, that is very important in a base trade situation and TVT. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could just get a few Vikings and just like maybe one or two Liberators, that would be so great for this situation on yeah, both sides. Well, Sotorx has no incentive not to do this, because think about right. it, he, they're, they're playing elimination, this is it, if they lose this, it's over, it's done, they're going home. So right. Sotorx is definitely fighting with every breath that he has, I love And I admire capacity. that so much. Yeah, uh, that Jin, I mean, uh, he's, he's got so much resources, he needs to start spending his resources, like, mm -hmm. like uh, Sotorx is doing. Oh. Like, just, Got really big system. pickups by the missile turrets, kills off a fully loaded medevac, another medevac oh, that is very so weak there. Yeah, yeah man, a huge pickup by Jin there. Jin still sitting on about Oh my goodness, he's files. denying the upgrade. Could he make it in time? No, oh, no. I, oh yes! My he that did! Seconds. Oh but my god. Uh, he was fast enough for these two. But that oh, is okay. He might get this one. He could get this one. It must. Plus three is cancelled. Now here comes a mega drop here. Oh, it's a planetary fortress, but the Jin just has too much siege tanks. Yeah, siege uh, tanks definitely just sitting out of range, killing off that planetary. And this is the bulk of Sotorx's infrastructure. He doesn't have the resources to rebuild this. He might just have to lift oh my this goodness. off. Jin is going for banshees. That is brilliant. If there are no orbital commands, mm -hmm. uh, orbital commands, then mm -hmm. these banshees can absolutely wreck havoc on these uh, Satorx forces. Yeah, the Marines brilliant. can't kill something they can't see. Yeah, de definitely. Alright, so, so Satorx has got to make this happen now. Um, it, it's brutal, man, but he just doesn't right. have the supply to do it. <sighs> We're seeing less oranges on the map here. Well, uh, he can't even get so out of this position. Gaming. He is right, literally yeah. locked in. He... Oh, but maybe he could... <gasps> here he goes! He has to close in so that it doesn't get into the uh, maximum r uh, the range of the tanks. But unfortunately, there's just too much tanks yeah, right here. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Not oh, actually, game. he's got it. He got it with the last two tanks just coming in to join the fight. Oh my god. He is, oh, wait, he is still here. He is still <laughs> amazing. in so But Jen is playing this smart. He's playing it carefully. He's pooling his banshees and he's going for the right timing. Uh, oh my this god. It just might be that Jin should attack now. He only sees three Marines. Oh, oh. can he uh, kill it? Whoa. Can he kill it? Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my god! That was oh. such a big pickup. Oh right my now, god! He has to save every single Marines up there. He has to just keep pulling those Marines. And oh my goodness, Cloak has been restarted, though, man. He's it's got seven medevacs, but what's the use? Oh, he has to play those micro very carefully. Oh my goodness. It's not gonna matter. He's got oh two Marines this is not left, gonna happen. Oh, this is such a huge comeback. <laughs> he oh. killed the Banshee. Okay, now he still has to play it safe. Uh, there's no way for that medevac to be caught, so he has to retreat right now. That medevac uh -huh. is safe, even if it's at 18 health. Oh my he has god, to just dude. He's making Marines. He can't lose this, man. He just... Oh, uh, this is so crazy. <laughs> this is the tensest game so far, dude. No, what he has to do is that, unfortunately, uh, actually all the production buildings are out for stored. Yeah, and... Oh, this, that's uh, the tank's shot, man. <gasps> He's doing the doom drop on top of the tank. And unfortunately, that just... Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the there we go. Loses the metal back. With all the marines inside. Oh, oh that was that was just brutal, dude. This and is. And unfortunately, so... I think that is GG. I don't think he's gonna tap out yet, man. I oh, think it's GG. Oh uh, nope, he didn't tap no, out. No, no, no. <laughs> he didn't tap out. He just left. Uh, oh my god, dude. That this was an insane one of the game. Best games. These. Wow. This is this is the epitome of Hope Team League, man. This is the type of games we right. wanted to see. 
It is I'm so glad it wasn't a four ZVZ today. That was the yeah. game that the fans wanted. That's for sure. Yeah, dude, that was definitely it, man. I am actually really sad to see Nocturnal Gamers going home. But right. this okay. does mean Psionic Aftermath is uh, going to be moving on into the round robin. So they right. are going to be moving in with Eternal Dreamers and Psystorm Gaming. Uh, we will be doing another of these elimination rounds on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So guys, if you want to support this event, please visit us on Match Arena with the correct link. Uh, Disrespect will let you know the uh, link information there. But please make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to tune in for you know better updates and uh, on-the-fly content. Not to mention all the StarCraft memes your heart could desire. Follow us on Twitter at PolygonSC2. Sluggy, thank you so much for casting with me tonight, man. It has thank been a you, pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for coming and watching. Yeah, it's been an yeah. honor. This particular casting squad will be back on Tuesday. You're going to have a brand new lineup on Saturday. But as always, our observer and admin uh, will be Apogee, who, you know, did a great job tonight. Thank you so much yeah. for the camera work. And Steph, Phoenix Tears, uh, who we could not have done this without him. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. I'll see you next time. Shout out my dudes.